questions and hopefully we can zoom into some pictures tonight that we have of the cars um, sitting down the assembly line. Um, this car here that Daniel's on, he's on a slope there um, and you can see it's, it's obviously climbing up but at the same time you see that that is sitting on 35s. So we have tested 35s. Uh, we've had very good um, success with them. Um, we did run them at Nora. Uh, we ran them uh, all the way through the whole race on one set of tires and the weather looked pretty good at the end of the race. So pretty happy with where we're at with our, our 35 inch tall tire. Um, and I think the, the car obviously sits on it, but uh, what we did uh, as we passed all of our uh, testing, um, CARB, EPA, uh, other stuff, we, we built the car around 35s, obviously, or 32s, so I'm going to clarify that. We spec the car around 32s, so 35 would have to be an aftermarket accessory. I think that our salespeople have informed a lot of people over the years that, um, that we would have a 35 and that that would be an accessory. It's not something you can actually get on the Speed UTV as a production item for the 2023 model. And yes, you heard me right, 2023 model is coming. And as we dance through the show tonight, I will show you a bit more of where we're at, what's happening. I told you last week, uh, five to eight weeks, the first customers will receive their cars. I do believe we're on target for that. Uh, this is the second week in a row that I will tell you that. So now are we saying four to seven weeks? I guess that's what the math adds up to. Uh, upcoming events. Um, I'm back in Charlotte this week. It's the first time I've been to HQ in a while. Um, working with, with all the guys here, going through a lot of the processes, procedures, stuff that we learned from Baja with the, um, the El Jefe, as well as other things that we continue to learn on a, on a weekly basis, daily basis with our cars. Um, we're going to talk about, this week I'll be at Off-Road Expo Arizona, so I will personally be there. We will have two cars on display, as well as our our, um, our activation trailer. So come by Phoenix if you're around, come by this, uh, this Saturday and Sunday and, and pay a visit, sit in the car, check it out. Um, we will have a couple different uh, seats there as well, as well as air cushions. Someone asked me a little while ago, uh, just a couple minutes ago, if I have air cushions that I use in the UTV, can I use those in a trophy truck? Well, if the secret be known that I have been using this air cushion in my trophy truck for probably the last 10 years. Um, I use it in all the stadium super trucks. Pretty much every racer that races stadium super truck has noticed a big improvement on their comfort in the vehicle with our air cushion. And this air cushion is inside this cover here. I'll pull one out just in case people forgot what they look like. Um, but we do have these and car repeat customers order them. This is a, an airbag style cushion, but it changes um, from one cell to another. It does have some valving control and it's very uh, strong as I can jump up and down on it. It um, helps a lot with uh, with shock and they have been uh, been very very good. So this is something um, something that works for us. Go ahead and I know we're getting a call in. I should have yep. put um, I should have put, uh, what is it? Um, do Not Disturb. Do Not Disturb on my phone, yeah. which I could do that. Let me do that real quick so we don't get another one. All right, we're back there. Sorry about that, guys. It's been a while um, and forgot to set that setting, but air cushions are available. We do use those in the stadium super trucks, which have gnarly loads. Use them in the trophy truck as well. Had great success with them. We got jumped already. Uh, Daniel, let's go to the next page. This is the uh, the poster that Scott did um, of our booth at Sand Sports. Uh, we won't have quite as big a booth at Off Road Expo, but we will have a couple cars there. Like I said, we'll have seats, we'll have an activation trailer, and I will be there personally as well as Mike Rebello to answer any questions for our current and existing customers. After this, next week. Um, We'll do this weekend at Phoenix, and we are not at the convention center in Phoenix. Let me clarify that. We're at Phoenix International Raceway. So Phoenix International Raceway. Huh, we lost audio on your, when you went to Do Not Disturb, we lost audio for uh -oh. some reason. No audio. <laughs> One, two, three, you got me back? Can you hear me? Hmm. All right, I'll take Do Not Disturb off. Let's see if that works. 
Does that give audio back? Are you guys back on audio? Can you hear me there? I think I did something. No good, no good. Lights out, turn up the radio, frozen. Okay, start over. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna jump out and we're gonna come right back. Hmm, that was weird. Discard video, yep. we'll just start all over. Do not disturb on first. I'll try do not disturb. Let's do that. Whoops, lock, do Turns not disturb. Right hmm? They're having a problem with the restream, that's why I wouldn't go through with your phone. All right. Ukrainian based company. We'll start all over. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we'll just give this a, a minute. Go ahead and start back all over, Daniel. And I'll, um, I'll start from the beginning. Well, just, just keep going on this one. And well, no, I'm going to go back have, over. And you don't lose the view. We're good. I got you. We're You're just fine. Volume's good. All right. Cool. Volume's back in action. Uh, Daniel sent back two pages. I'll make this quick as an intro. For some reason, I got a call in on my cell phone and it knocked the audio out, so I had to reboot on Instagram. So I'm sorry about that, guys. I did put Do Not Disturb on this time from the get-go before we started the feed. Uh, show presentation 103, Daniel's uh, here at the factory um, with um, in one of our test cars there, sitting on 35s. I did say that we did run 35s at Nora. We had great success with them. We're on the same four tires for both days, 500 miles. Obviously, they should definitely go more than 500 miles. Uh, really didn't have any, any major issues. We don't have enough um, testing on the 35s to make this a manufactured part. This is an aftermarket accessory. As I stated before, my phone shut down. Um, we did all of our EPA testing, dyno testing, carb testing, everything on 32s. So. The 2023 model El Jefe's, Diablos, and Bandits will all come on the Speed 32 inch tall tire. I want to make that crystal clear. I know there's a lot of questions about that. Daniel, we'll go over to number two. I'm being fast here, just trying to catch back up. Upcoming events, um, tall metrics, accessories, and production. We're going to dance through those today um, in today's show. Uh, this weekend, um, it does say um, Off Road Expo at the Convention Center. That is wrong. We are at Phoenix International Raceway. Phoenix International Raceway this weekend at the Off-Road Expo. So inside the racetrack um, where I won my first IndyCar race, uh, Phoenix, um, we will be there for the uh, the Off-Road Expo and I guess um, All right. Phoenix International Raceway. Yep, correct. That's quick. Good job, Daniel. Um, next weekend, Todd Romano and Connor will be at UTV Takeover. Let's go on to page number four and kind of get back to where we started or where we broke off on my Insta. Um, we didn't really talk about this. I know that we posted it once we had the products, once we tested the products, and we knew that they would be an option at Speed UTV. Um, but I wanted to talk more about the, the bundle, basically. And the belt temp sensor, I want to show where it shows up on your dash it shows up over there where it says 32 degrees so daniel the belt seems to be frozen right now nice um, cool. that's in fahrenheit so that, that is freezing right there right yeah yes um, it was up in canada it was in canada <laughs> okay the car was in canada when we did this um has an infrared sensor uh, mounts on the cvt cover and it does tie into our digital dash display so this is something that uh, a lot of people asked for and we have now have this as part of the bundle that Todd offered up, I'm going to say, six to eight weeks ago. You can talk about the screen mirroring too. I don't have a slide for it, but yes, yeah. is... uh, right here you can see that the mobile phone LCD instrument that is for screen mirroring. So if you have Lead Nav or Maps.me or something on your phone, uh, maybe even Strava or something like that, where you're, you're trying to run a trail, um, you could put that up on on the screen as well. So uh, there's a few options, a few pages that give us options for screen mirroring. This is one page here that we just showed for today's episode that talks about the belt temperature and where it's at. It's in the bottom right hand corner. It says belt temp, it says 32 degrees. Uh, tire pressure sensors. We didn't talk a lot about tire pressure sensors before, um, but there's more to the tire pressure sensor than what people think. This is not a sensor that gets screwed onto the valve cap on the outside tire. 
This is something that's integrated into the car system. It's something that is not that easy to install. So that's why we recommend if you do the bundle, you get this package that has tire pressure sensors and it measures your tire temperatures. So it has infrared temperature, measures up to the carcass of the tire from the inside and will actually give you your tire temperatures. So if you see your pressures rise, like we saw in NASCAR or IndyCar or even the trophy truck, and you see your pressures rise, don't panic, look at your temperature. Because when the temperatures goes up, the pressure rises. Pretty common in motorsports. Um, anybody that's getting into the technical side of their vehicle, they will understand that with, with temperature, pressure rises. Same thing with oil. You look at a big oil tank and you see it sitting there about half full. Oil expands, it grows. Um, those are things that we're gonna have to obviously teach a lot of our customers about. But this is a pretty cool option. Uh, very similar to what we had with Indy cars. I don't even have tire pressure sensors on my trophy truck. I know some people do. Um, I currently don't have them, but I think it's pretty cool that we do have it as an option on the Speed UTV. And there is a system that will learn the tire, what position it's in. If you have a spare and then you have to change a tire, you can actually log it in yourself, right, Jason? And yep. click a couple buttons and boom, it'll identify it. <clears throat> it'll recognize that tire. You tell it what position it's in and boom, you got all four of your tire pressures working again. Um, gyroscope sensor, it has pitch, roll, and g-force. Um, a lot of people have seen these two icons up in the top up there. Um, this one and this one. It also helps us understand your vehicle, uh, ties it into the, uh, the ECU. We get to learn about what type of riding the customers are doing and how we can actually learn to be a better manufacturer by having this stuff. Um, this is an option um, and it's an expensive option, but it does integrate in and it's something that not only gives yourself an idea if you're afraid of being on too much angle and potentially rolling in a sand dune or if you're heading down a hill too steep, but it also gives you G-forces and some other things. So we can learn data from all these cars and continue to be a better manufacturer. Front and rear cameras are, cameras are part of the bundle package as well. And as you see here, we've got the, uh, that one there looks like it's um, both, both those seem to be, unless they change the car, but those look like similar. But nope, that's different. Obviously one's facing forward, one's facing backwards, sorry. Um, you can see that with um, left and right. Um, no, nope, that actually looks like it's just reversed angle. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to, um, call fake on that on that screen but there is front and rear cameras um, Jeff, tell us the truth. sorry Jeff but I can see that that one <laughs> is near and our customers were not stupid okay because they already think that we're using the same photo here in a couple more slides from three months ago so when we do stuff like this I mean I'm just gonna have to call you out I see the white stuff over there I see the white stuff over there our customers are no dummies man these, buy, these guys buy speed UTV all right <laughs> Rock lights. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just know what that, that position of that picture should look like. And I know what the other side of those cameras look like. So that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> oh, we're back to it again. Um, <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you trying to kick him a little bit, Daniel? Yeah, he, fun. he tried to pull a fast one on me, didn't he? Um, I was born at night, not last night. I'm impressed even about that. <laughs> um, rock lights. Uh, rock lights is something that um, we did integrate the package into our wiring harness. That's something Jason did a badass job on. It's, um, it's really, really clean, um, but you have all the plugs so you don't have to run extra wires all over the place. We integrated those plugs into the wiring harness. So if you do buy the rock light system, it's fairly easy to integrate at a later date but if you buy it ahead of time, we will obviously install it for you for the ones that have already done it. Uh, what we want to talk about is rock lights and interior lights. There was a bit of confusion between rock lights and interior lights. We tried to put the rock lights inside the car. I got to be honest, guys, it just wasn't that good. We needed a completely separate system to be able to have enough lighting inside the car to be comfortable. So um, we sourced another lighting package for interior lighting, and we'll jump into that. Boom. Interior lighting is an interior lighting package. This is at nighttime, in dark. 
You can see the interior lighting. Um, Daniel, we can change the colors of the interior, correct? Yeah. It is uh, color changeable, so you can pick full, what you full like. RGB. Huh? Full RGB. Full RGB. I guess that means you can change any color you want. Yeah. Um, it responds to sound, too. So if it you says R R RG, I'm thinking. Only, yeah, Robbie, Robbie Gordon. Gordon. Blue. Blue. Okay. Let's go with that. <laughs> I, I had another idea for the B, but we'll go with that. Um, exterior lighting. Um, well, there's the interior lighting from the outside. Pretty awesome the way that um, lights up the car. Obviously, Daniel mixed in a green there with the orange car. It still doesn't look horrible. Kind of cool if you're out. There's it is changing colors. Daniel's onto this purple thing. Blue, red, gray, white, orange, teal. Back to purple again. Red. Lots of choices. Lots of choices you can do. Colors there. Custom colors as well. I said you're practicing colors. Practicing my colors, yeah. I need to go back to school for colors. Can you send it to the match the, the hex colors from your wrap? <laughs> you could probably could. You, I, I don't know. Can you, Daniel? Probably yeah. figure it out. Probably get pretty close to what your wrap colors are if you wanted to do that on your interior. So. Um, pretty neat the way you can really see the detail of the car um, and the attention to detail of, of, of the whole package. Um, obviously you see the interior, good interior stuff. The wiring would not look like that. Just let's be clear, this is just laid in the car to give you an idea of colors. Um, this is not how it would be assembled uh, coming from, from my facilities. It hooks into your roof harness. It does hook into your roof harness. So if you, um, that is an accessory harness that you purchase, I believe, right? It comes yeah. with the bundle. It comes with the bundle. The roof harness comes with the bundle. Um, does not come with the interior lights, but it comes with the bundle, and then you attach your uh, RGB into your roof harness, and you would have really cool interior lighting. You can place it all over your roll bars. I believe they do stick on adhesive onto the roll bar. Is that correct? Adhesive, and then we'd, if it was me, I'd throw a, a zip tie over it as well, just for extra security. 35 inch tall tires, I talked about that. Um, it's been really good. Crescent storage box. I know I'm getting into things people, you know, they say, well, we know about this. We know about Crescent. We know about this. Um, really not a lot, not a lot to talk about, guys. I mean, we're going to get into some manufacturing stuff, but the, the newbies, the ones that have seen this before, have not seen this before, want to show them what the rectangle boxes are. There's a cool picture, open and closed. Nice job, guys. Um, but this can get configured in multiple different configurations. Daniel, do we have any other choices, or is that all we got? Uh, that's all we've got. Okay, but I can kind of take this and explain it. So, from the factory with our Speed UTV on all LE and RG cars, there is four spare tire option locations pre manufactured in your vehicle. So, very different than any other manufacturer where you want to put a spare tire in, you've got to make a buy a spare tire rack. Uh, at Speed UTV, we already give you the base mounting. The only thing you need to do is get your spinner and obviously your spare tire. This could get put into different locations. It can go, this is in the back, what we call California pre-run style. Drop the tailgate down, slide it back. This gives us all three boxes, it gives us the crescent box, the two side boxes, and the spare tire in the rear location. Um, we can also keep the tailgate closed and either put the tire to the left or to the right. Now, if it was me and I was riding with a female next to me and she was lighter, I would shift the tire to the right side to try to equal out some of the car balance. So I would shift it over to this side. Yes, I am saying I'm a bit heavy these days. Um, if I wanted to race, I'd probably put it in the middle just to keep the balance the best I could. Unless I was racing with one person, I'd shift it back to the right side again. Um, and you could go all the way to the left side, just to, it's however you want to configure it. When you do that and close it, this, this package here could twist and turn left or right, um, but it cannot fit fore aft with a tire. You have to either go left or right, so you get two choices with that if you put the crescent box in. Next one. Making it right now. Making it. All right, we're, we're, uh, we're making it. Um, what does that mean we're making it? You just machine that right now? Yeah. That quick. And installed it? Easy. Easy. All right. 
Um, what he's talking about is the Willwood package. We just got a note um, on, hey, are you guys going to talk about the Willwood brake package? And um, I said we would do it this week, and I missed it. So Daniel is piecing something together really quick. Manufacturing one. Give me that one. There we go. Willwood brake package. Look at that. Manufactured that quick. Um, with the Willwood package, it's a package that we worked directly with Willwood on. Um, we, Kyle, when we were at the factory, one of the factories, um, Kyle worked on this package with us. And as you see, the Willwood is in. It actually even has more room to the valve stem. Um, the package, this is a six piston, a six piston caliper, three on the inside, three on the outside. Uh, also has a floating rotor, and I'm gonna guess the rotor is an inch and a quarter taller. How close do you think I am on that, Daniel? Probably close. That's a full inch, but it's definitely way bigger. It, it, it appears to be way bigger. He doesn't know if it's an inch bigger. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say inch to inch and a quarter. PJ Jones gives us thumbs up on the Willwood. On the Willwood, mm -hmm. yeah, PJ Jones. Um, PJ did recommend this to us and said, hey, you guys, we need to be looking at a package. This is something I have on my race car, it's awesome. So I've worked with a longtime partner, Mike Hamrick, who's worked with us on Stadium Super Truck. All the Stadium Super Trucks have Willwood brakes. Um, we do run Hawk pads on our Stadium Super Trucks, but we do have Willwood brakes. Here, this is a full Willwood package, um, but we will eventually have a Hawk package for this as well, for the guys that want the high performance extra grip compound. Now, Willwood also makes some great pay, uh, brake pads as well. And that would give you a lot of choices between the Hawk and the Willwood for brake three, pads. Three different pads available from Willwood. Right? So Willwood has three. I know the Hawk will end up making a couple. So let's just say by the time we're, we're, we're out with this thing, we'll have five brake pad combos that you can run on your rotors. We'll have a couple different rotor options, solid rotors, vented rotors, etc. cetera. Um, but here it is on the car. It does fit on to our production package. And I left this spindle out here because I wanted to be able to share this. So when we designed the Speed UTV, the unit bearing, that I believe we've shown before, comes out of the spindle. With the unit bearing coming out of the spindle, there's a recessed piece right here. As you see, it steps down. These three bolts actually pick up the, ro the caliper mount. So we pre-thought this. This isn't an afterthought of, oh, hey, we're going to go to brakes. It's like, no, we're going to build big brakes later. Uh, we got to get to production. But as we move into performance, high performance racing, road racing, etc., I wanted to be able to do this. As you saw, we had the road race car. Well, if you end up putting the road race car on 20s, you could put much bigger brake rotors on it. Well, it's not a new spindle. You don't have to go build a new spindle. You don't have to make a new unit bearing. This package right here adapts these three bolts. You can stand off your brake caliper mount and you can go anywhere from a 10 inch rotor to a 15 inch rotor just by changing these three bolts and bolting package on. This is the same package, same unit bearing, front and rear on the Speed UTV. So if you're gonna to go to Baja, go on a thousand mile ride and you're worried about your wheel bearings, I don't know if you should be, I don't think you should be. Uh, we ran the full Dakar on, on one of these bearings. Um, what's that, 7,000 miles on one bearing? Uh, on three cars, not one bearing for three cars, but each car had four wheel bearings that none of them failed and ran 21,000 miles between the four, the three cars. Um, this package here, really easy for the aftermarket guy, the mom and pop guy that wants to do this in his garage. He can bolt on the Willwood package himself. We'll provide an instruction manual. This is not something that would be too hard to adapt for any guy or girl to do in their garage. So Willwood package was pre-thought um, on the production speed UTV as this is a front spindle, this is a unit bearing, this unit bearing not only works on the front spindle, this plugs into the trailer arm as well. What we got next? I want to just uh, show a bit more of, of manufacturing. Um, as you see, there's, there's Ken from Push Turbo, Daniel and Alan from Tap Clutch. Uh, that's one of our production engines there. Um, that's as it's, as it's in the process. As you see, this machine here is either measuring, is that measuring or is that sealing? 
in that case, the, uh, the RXBT. So that is a sealant machine there for, for sealing the, I don't know if that's a rear diff or block or what that is, I think that's a rear diff, uh, the way it's sitting there, but fully automated um, and make sure we get the correct amount of silicone for the best sealing we can possibly do. But this thought it was a cool picture for people that wanted to see some of the manufacturing stuff. Um, like I said, fully automated. Um, this runs down, this robot runs down two lines, loads through four machines and back out, uh, does many multiple processes on the engine. So as you see, it's picking up an engine block here, it's dropping it in there, and you see guys uh, programming uh, these, these machines at this time. <coughs> um, this is a crazy one. Um, and I was actually very, very impressed. So at Speed UTV and Speed Side-by-Side, -side, when we make our aftermarket long travel kits call, uh, when we were doing it for the Articat, and we were doing a long travel kit, we would have parts either water jet or laser cut. Um, this program here, we were never gonna be able to keep up with water jet or laser. It's probably so, 45 to an hour to water jet an arm, I'd say. Okay, so Daniel says to water jet an arm, which we feel is the right way to do it because we don't get the laser crystallization around it. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to water jet all the pieces <coughs> for one arm. Um, this just hopefully shows the commitment with Speed UTV. We made tooling. There was tooling made for every suspension part and component. So, you know, I know a year ago, year and a half ago, you guys were... We're calling us out. Why is it taking this? Why is it taking that? Why does it take so long? We actually made complete tooling to be able to do this. These are actually stampings by massive presses, and it will stamp these A arms or inner buckets or whatever it be for the trailing arm. Is That's the, a rear trailing arm. That's a, 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 a lower A arm for the front. Dan, you got another picture you want to pull up? Yeah, I'm try to find one of the one of the presses comes out of the stamping because they do those arms like three or four at a time in one stamp. Yeah, so one stamp, three or four parts at a time, 4130 material. Um, and what's nice is the stamp is a clean stamp. It still gives us all our keyways that we would normally do like if we were laser water, and it doesn't give us the crystallization when we go to weld. So if you've seen some of our lower control arms at either Sand Sports, or you'll see them this weekend at Off-Road Expo. Our final production suspension components look like honestly somebody's high-end aftermarket part. Doesn't look like a production part. And this is how we're able to do this, is we do it with stampings and mass production procedures. Let's go to the next page. Yeah, just one more second, you keep talking. I'll keep talking, all right. Um, you know, we, we, can, we can talk a little bit about this, but the process, is amazing and the, the noise okay. when this happens is scary um, it is it's a gnarly sound that comes out of that machine as it's trying to, to punch through Jesus 150 inches of 4130 in, in multiple different angles because it does three lower arm bottoms or tops at a time it does three trailing arms at a time it completely folds this there you go this is all the material, which in my mind, I look at all this material looking at waste, but it's all about time. It's all about how fast can we do it. And I'm sure that material does get used in other places, but if you look at this, how we would normally do a trailer arm, we'd nest it. And we have it completely nested and using up every bit of material, just like if you were gonna run a decal machine. You nest it, try to use up as much material as possible. Here, this is the, um, the other side stamp of the lowers, and then now you see piles of rear trailing arms. And these are the stampings to be able to make a trailing arm. But when you look at building 18,000 cars, you gotta build this time, it's fast. It's gotta happen quick. And it has to be very, very efficient. Sometimes we do have material waste. Like I said, I'd be very surprised if all of that was waste. Oh, there you go, there's one of the toolings. That is a tooling made solid just for stamping um, that in it, inner wrap on the rear trailer arm. So that's the inner wrap that goes between the two pivots on the rear trailer arm 
And as you see, there's hundreds of parts over here to the right, and here's the tooling and the processes that we put in place to be able to build you a quality part. So it's not just uh, one engine building it at Robbie's shop in Charlotte, North Carolina, or one A-arm, or, or one steering rack. We're, we're making steering racks right now just for very, very high performance race car stuff. Um, we did all that in the process, and then we put it into manufacturing procedures so that we can bring you a quality unit at a reasonable price. All right, so vehicle. Um, this is this is the picture that I posted about tonight's show. Some people called me out and said, oh, that's the same picture from a long time ago. Guys, it's not the same picture from a long time ago. Uh, there is no Photoshop here. These are new cars that are in position to, uh, to these are customer cars. Let me make that very, very clear. These are RG cars. Uh, as you see, you can see the new color orange. A lot of questions about the orange. I saw it saying for it. This is the orange. You see the orange springs, you see the orange arms. Um, you see the inner webbing of the doors. Um, you see a lot of things here that normally you wouldn't see um, at, a, at a show because you'd see a wrap and, and, and stuff all covered up. Daniel's zooming in there. Um, but this is really, really, really cool. And um, it's awesome to see this many cars happen at one time. And these are in the process. Uh, these are final checks are happening to some of these vehicles as it's already run down the assembly line process and either they didn't like the way something worked and they're just reworking it to, to improve the process. And this one here, if I was to guess, I see doors. I know you guys talked a lot about doors. Uh, we talk about doors a lot around here. And um, this is what, uh, what's happening. So these are customer cars. Uh, these are some of the cars that will be coming to customers in the next um, what five to five to seven weeks. So um, these are these are cars. Um, there's a really cool picture of a, another set of cars uh, running down the assembly line, and then here's a cool picture of the bulkhead and how it gets built in a sub assembly, and then it slides down the line as a pre-built unit and plugs right onto your car. This is stuff that we learned. Um, I learned it from back in the day with IndyCar and I looked at this vehicle when we were doing it and said why don't we do either the new unicorn trophy truck like this and why don't we do a UTV where we can build a complete sub-assembly, have this thing pre-built in another station, when the car runs down the line we can just mate it together and down the road we go. Um, I think one of the coolest things I ever saw, I never saw one of these on the front of a car, okay? Never been hooked up with steering, never been hooked up with all the off-road um, suspension pivot points. But I do remember at Le Mans, I'm going back seven, eight years ago, I watched the Audi team change the complete rear suspension, transmission, clutch, hubs, wheel bearings, in about two minutes and 30 seconds at the 24 hours of Le Mans. And that right there is when I learned we need to be thinking like this if we're gonna become a real manufacturer and we need to be able to do things fast. So having a sub-assembly like this um, is pretty cool. Then it comes down to having tooling that's adjustable to be able to mate it to the chassis. And these are also things that we continue to work on for our dealers. So we'll have dealer tooling as well. So when the dealer wants to pull a front bulkhead off, they have the right tools to tilt it left and right, separate it from the motor. We've got these high stands that we showed at Sand Sports, another product that we're bringing to market that will allow us to do this, as well as an adjustable um, front end to be able to twist it left and right, up and down, and load it onto the car. So we, we're not only, we're beyond working on the car, now we're working on the maintenance and the uh, procedure processes of making this a better, uh, a better vehicle. A better vehicle, an easier vehicle to, work, vehicle to work on, and easier for the dealers to do their job, which at the end of the day, hopefully is less time at the dealer. And that all saves the customer's money. One more time. Um, EPA cert, I know I posted it last week. Um, we did that from the garage in California. Now we're back at our workshop here in Charlotte. Uh, I did want to post it one more time. All of our cars, I want to be clear, all of our cars for every state come with the same exhaust, same Cadillac converter, 
the same EVAP system, all the requirements for California because what I'm afraid of as a manufacturer is these systems will be put into other states as we go. So we have one tune, one package that works for all of the United States, including California. So we do have a catalytic converter in our catalytic converter, converter. catalytic converter, uh, converter in our muffler. It's built into the muffler, and it is in all mufflers for all states. Um, so we don't have an Arizona package versus a California package. It's all the same. It makes our job easier. It makes the dealer's job easier. It makes your job easier once we're fully compliant with California. If you move your car, it could actually roll right over. So there is no Arizona cars, Michigan cars, Nevada cars. They're all the same. Speed UTV builds all the cars same. Try to do everything we can to make our job as easy as possible. Yes, it does cost more money, but at the end of the day, this is what you guys are paying for. You want a quality car, and that's what we're building for you. Customer questions. Duffel bags. Where's duffel bags? Did I, did I get a duffel bag? Backpacks. Backpack. We got a side plug. Got a whole Do bunch I have of, a backpack? There's one right there. Yeah, but I want to I wanna show how many cool compartments are in this backpack. That's pretty empty. Yours is empty? It's pretty empty. It's a backpack. It's got some stuff. Backpack. I got, I got one. Thing. We, we got an empty one, all right? I got an empty you one. Got, you guys let them know who asked for this. Right. Yes, yeah, so um, Carmen Woodward, I think they were messing with me. Are we going to talk about backpacks in tonight's show? Well, we haven't talked about backpacks yet, but now that you guys want to talk about backpacks, <laughs> why not? We'll talk about backpacks. Um, <coughs> this is uh, Jason's backpack here. And when we decided we were gonna get into the backpack side of things and the reason we did was more for the team aspect and allowing our customers to be part of the team. Oh, we got another backpack there. Empty or full? Empty. I got an empty one, great. Is that the same graphic? Different no, different graphic. graphic. So um, three styles. Multiple multiple options. We got our plain speed that could work for anything. Tools, tires, RC cars. <laughs> Over here, <laughs> we see we have Jason's backpack. This one's getting a little dirty. We've been we've been using yeah, this up. So probably gone use, gone test a little bit. It does have a really nice computer compartment. It is uh, layered inside. It does have a little uh, package here to be able to put your your keys. Um, it's got a computer strap to hold it down if you go off roading with your backpack. It's got the strap on the back if you have your um, your what do you call it? your roller your, 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 your roller you know, cart? Yeah, you know, like you see the pilots roll around, you can slip that right on there, and you can carry both of them if, you, if it's too heavy for you. Um, we've got uh, this compartment in here. There's how many compartments? Does anybody know? Eighteen. That? Eighteen mm -hmm. compartments. Yeah. Eighteen compartments. <laughs> um, special compartments under here. Oh, I found Jason's money. It's in that one right there. Oh, that's good. Um, one, two. I think you might be wrong. There's five compartments in that one. In that one. Did count each one? I did. How are you counting them all? Eighteen. Count all those little ones. Oh, what about? Oh, what about the secret one back here. Yep. Did you get that one too? Yep. All right. So backpacks. Yes, they're in stock. We'll have them for Christmas. Um, they're great for adults. They're great for kids. But great to carry your goggles in. We are actually using them to carry our cameras in when we do events. Um, pretty much using them for everything, and they're very durable. And if you don't like my backpack, don't buy it. I don't care. Is that something? If you like it, buy it. All right, that was, I'm just being funny. Um, 18 compartments, dimensions, uh, Speed S, full Speed S interior. And um, Carmen Woodward, thank you for asking about backpacks. <laughs> they need to understand that we've always done backpacks. We've always done backpacks, though. We've had OGO backpacks, we've had multiple backpacks you gotta understand i've had i've had red bull backpacks monster backpacks and speed backpacks all right i've had toyota backpacks ford backpacks dodge back backpacks chevrolet backpacks hummer backpacks um hummer backpacks yeah we have hummer yeah, backpacks. backpacks um i'm a big fan of backpacks and um this is another one that just doesn't have anything in it and you want to know about bandit backpacks oh Ooh. 
Why do, did we do bandits? No. Nope. Yeah, oh, yeah, about the step oh, oh what, is, what about that one? What, what's, what's yours? I've got, I've got Diablo as well. Yeah. Jeff's got the Alhambra. Yeah, yeah, Forcer, uh, Diablo, so we, have, we didn't meet the minimum order quantity. For the <laughs> we didn't meet the minimum order quantity? Well, I mean, hey, all my other manufacturing partners said there was no business case for a four-seater, and we didn't sell enough ban bandits to make backpacks. Think about that, guys. Uh, maybe we did have the right model for this. Um, what else we got? Oh, this is uh, this is the one. Um, looks like the same poster from April here. Uh, definitely not the same picture. Um, and no, it's not just different wheels on the car. Uh, if you look here, this one has the blue springs. It has well, don't the different all the answers. Answers. Oh, they, it's contest. a competition. Oh, it's a competition. Yeah, yeah to win a backpack. Yeah, to win a backpack. <laughs> oh, to win a backpack. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! All right, sorry. All right, do me a favor. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm out to lunch on this game here. Um, I just went into page 27 on tonight's show and, and started rolling. So I need you guys to tell me what the difference is because you guys all call me out on everything I talk about. Uh, if I say um, the sky is blue, you're saying, no, the sky is gray. It's, it's, you know, or the sky is black. Um, <laughs> all right, so I posted two pictures and immediately, bang, 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 thrash Robbie. Knock him down, beat him up, bloody him up. Let's have some fun with this, guys. The number one post me, send me, um, how, how are they going to do it? How are they going to send us the information? Just post it. Post it? Post it in a group. And in a group on Facebook? Yeah. And the how, about, how about tonight? How about tonight's, tonight's show on Facebook? Just comment on it. Comment on it. And we will go to the Facebook. We will read the comments. The person that comes up with the most differences between these five cars and these... Well, then that's one of the differences. Is how many cars <laughs> but how many cars are there? But, well, but that's that's none of all us. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Take me. Okay. Just, tell me just tell me the difference. <laughs> We're looking for creative answers. The judging is okay. entirely subjective. Oh. Hold on. I see a lot of differences. We're looking for well, you, can, you can compete too. Can I, can, I am going to win a backpack. I got this game. Carrie, Carrie Parker mentioned, uh, I made the video, by the way, I was totally joking. She sent a heart, heart. so she's got to be the one to find all the differences to win. All right, uh, Carrie, um, I want you to, um, to find the differences. Be the I want to just cancel the contest and send her the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> just send it to her? Yeah. Um, hmm, that's interesting. We'll think about it. <laughs> I'll, I'll think about that. Was she kidney punching me when she was doing this? All right, um... Customer questions. 35 inch tires and Willwood brakes kit are not available, are not available as a pre-installed option. So no. Today, 2023 Speed UTV, the one you guys are waiting for. Um, the 35s are an accessory, and the Willwood is an accessory as well. Um, as we do more testing, maybe 2024. 2025 models, I will consider that on the RG package or maybe even the Mad, Mad, Mad Max package. Um, huh? Yeah, Mad Max, why not? Let's do it all black on black. All right? Um, <coughs> with some more black. Um, so, nope, not an option. Let me tell you one thing about the 35s and four people in the car on the pavement. It has no problem howling all four tires under braking. Like, gnarly grip, impressive. And that was after Nora. If you don't believe me, ask Mario Gutierrez. He will tell you he about hit his head on the dashboard. Um, this one here, customer question for me. Can I tow my car on a dolly? Are you crazy? Seriously, tow your car on a dolly? Please don't tow your car on a dolly. All right, um, you could pop it into neutral. I guess you could probably get away with it, um, but I'm not gonna suggest it. I'm not gonna suggest it for multiple reasons. Uh, a lot of it uh, is how we designed the tire. Um, we learned a long time ago with lower horsepower, and I'm saying lower horsepower, okay? Don't take this the wrong way. When you're comparing 1,000 horsepower trophy trucks to 220 horsepower class 10 cars, 
we learned that a crowned tire on a class 10 car worked better than a square tire. So our tires do have some crown to them because one, it keeps the car a lot flatter in the corners. They don't want to catch and bike. Um, they slide better, but on gra hard packed gravel, we learned a long time ago that the crown tire does not skate as much. It has less patch in that area. It'll kind of clean the path as quick as possible, get down and get some bite. So our tires, if you're to tow them on the highway, excessive highway use, uh, you'll see some wearing in the center of the tire. But we designed that for performance in the dirt. So I want you guys to understand these cars were built for the dirt, they're made for the dirt, the tires are for the dirt, and I do not recommend towing your car on a dolly, buy a flatbed, move to a state that you can potentially register it, I guess. Um, do whatever you think is right. Haul it on a flatbed. Real simple. Haul it on a flatbed, take it to your riding area, and have a lot of fun. Rian Lewis. Um, they're mad that now I'm not at UTV Nationals. Um, and I'm, I'm mad we're not there too, but the reality is we're back here working on things. Um, we're not out playing. <clears throat> We're not on vacation, um, we're digging, we're working hard. Um, in the room here tonight, I got three engineers and design, media, marketing, and myself, uh, Imagineer 101, and um, we're going for it. So I did send Matt Martelli a note this week, or this morning, wishing him good luck at the California 300. I wish all the competitors good luck. Uh, we're, we're bummed we're not there. We will be there racing soon. We've got a fleet of race cars out here in the shop. Some of you guys have seen the car that we brought to the Nora 500. There is multiple cars of those in process right now. And uh, we're looking forward to the Baja 1000. Anything else? You don't want to mention what we're working on right now? That's also going to be available later? Uh, what we're working on right now? No, we'll save that for next week. <laughs> or let's, let's save this package. Um, Jason's working on a package for performance racing that would be a manufacturer option, okay? So that means it's legal for most racing or all racing as far as I'm concerned because it's a manufactured part number and option. And we got lots of cool stuff coming. We're looking forward to going racing with you guys here real soon. Looking forward more importantly to hand delivering cars to the first 20 guys here in the next few weeks. And that is my goal today. Have a good night. Are you Carl Sykes? I'm not Carl Sykes. Guy's pretty good though.